Hello all. In this lecture, we will be covering concepts on reliability testing. So reliability means yielding the same. What do we mean by yielding the same? The software or the product performs consistent consistently. This is the meaning. Let us first look at the objective of reliability testing. To evaluate product's ability to perform its required functions for a specified period of time or number of iterations. What do we mean by this? So, we are going to check if the product can perform well even though it is being repeatedly given the same task of doing it. Say, for example, querying a database continuously for 48 hours. This is not going to happen in a real time scenario. But we are going to test it to ensure that it is behaving correctly. Okay, and performing a login operation for 10k times. Imagine 10k times login operation. We are checking the behavior of the software. By doing this, we are checking the behavior of the software. Now, there are two different things that we should understand. One is the reliability of the product. One is the reliability of the product. The next one is the reliability testing. We should understand that both are completely different worlds. The first one, reliability of a product. That is, we are talking about a reliable product. Reliable product. What do we mean by a reliable product? The product is developed using sound technique. It has a good discipline. It is developed using robust processes. It has a strong management. And finally, it is a quality product. Here, quality means encompasses all qualities. Okay, we are talking about all holistic, all qualities we are talking of the software. So, such a product is only called as a reliable product. And how to achieve this reliable product? How to get this reliable product? We have already learned this in the software engineering course. Okay, so using defined engineering processes that we have already learned, SDLC. And then reviewing the work products at each stage. At each stage, I will review the product that is obtained at the each stage. Next, I will change management procedures have to be carefully looked into. What is change management procedure? Usually, problems or defects crop into a product or a software only when changes are done to certain modules. Initially, the modules will be working well. But when some feature is introduced or some modification is done in a module, then problems crop up. So, there should be certain change management procedures to cover these. Then we have the review of testing coverage. Review of testing coverage is another important thing where we should closely watch whether all the test coverage is performed. The last criteria is ongoing monitoring of the product. After the product is released, it is important for us to check if the defects crop up and then attend to it, fix the issues. So, this is how the reliability of the product is ensured. Now, let us look into the second world which is reliability testing. Reliability testing does not produce a reliable product. This is a very important thing that we should remember. Reliability testing does not produce a reliable product instead it outputs a reliability tested product i am going to have a reliability tested product so what am i going to do here instead of doing all of these i am going to perform tracking of defects what am i going to do in reliability testing exactly tracking of defects this is what is done in the reliability testing okay and at each stage there is an accepted number of defects. These many defects are allowed at this stage. So, there is some expectation or the requirement that is placed by the software product organization when the product engineering begins. 
So what am I going to do? I am going to check the actual number of def defects against the expected number of defects, accepted number of defects. Okay. What am I going to compare here? Actual defects versus accepted defects, accepted number of defects. This is uh, exactly what I mean by calling, telling defect tracking. Okay, now look at this graph. So, this dotted line is the reliability criterion, which is the accepted defects, reliability criterion. But here, this is actually the defects that we are getting. Okay, so initially when we start the uh, reliability testing, here is the number of defects. But when we go on testing it repeatedly, it decreases. Decreases and reaches towards the reliability criteria. When it meets the reliability criteria, we say that it has gone undergone a smooth progress is seen here. This is a smooth progress. Why is it a smooth progress? Because it is continuously decreasing smoothly. The curve is smooth. Okay, now look at this figure. Instead of smooth progress, here we see some spikes. What are these spikes? As we say, this is the defects. So, initially the defects were high. It gone down. It went down. Again, it has increased. There is a spike in the number of defects. Why is it increased? Defects have to actually decrease. In between, it is increasing and we should understand the reason why it is increasing. This is this is a very important thing to analyze here in this graph. Okay, so here we have spikes and this means the number of defects are increasing randomly in between. This should not happen. So, we should identify the reason behind the spikes as well. Let us now look at this figure. Here we see that we are going to compare the performance with the reliability impact. Why should I compare the performance? As we said earlier, here this is the reliability criterion. This is the reliability criterion. Okay, this is the reliability criterion. Now, what is this? This is the number of defects. As we are seeing, it is almost smooth. It is decreasing. It has come almost near to reliability criterion. We are okay with it. But look at the performance, response time. Performance is nothing but response time in this graph. Okay, look at the response time. It has gone up. Response time should be lesser actually. What happened? As the defects are decreasing, the response time has gone up. Again, it has decreased. And when we reach the reliability criterion, it has again increased. So what happened is, you are actually having a trade-off with the performance. You are not bothered about the performance, but you are bothered about reducing the defects. So, there is a problem here. So, we need to always check performance parallelly when we are checking reliability, when reliability testing is performed. Okay. The next important thing to consider here in reliability testing is resource utilization. So, when we are going to perform when we are going to perform the reliability testing we should also keep a watch on the resource utilization let us plot the resource utilization during the period of reliability testing look at the resource utilization there are three different resources mentioned here the first one is memory memory as we see here the memory usage has increased by and far, it has increased too much. And the network, you can see, it remains stable. And here, the CPU has also, need for CPU, utilization of CPU is also randomly increasing and decreasing. Actually, this should not happen. Why? Because when your resources are being increasingly used like this, and memory usage at times reaches 100% utilization, there is a high possibility that your software product may hang during its operations or it may crash during its operations. 
So it is very much required that the memory utilization and the CPU are, are balanced. Why? Because memory and CPU are not only required for that particular software or product running on that machine or the hardware, but there may be simultaneously many other processes which may need memory or CPU. So that is the reason. Right? So these are some important things to keep in mind when we are doing reliability testing. Expressing reliability defect charts. So finally, when we have to produce the results for reliability testing, we need to present them as charts. So these charts should have these three main things. First one is mean time between failures. The second one is failure rate. Third one is mean time to discover the next K faults. So time between failures, okay. So for the first and second failure, there is a time T1. For the second and third failure, time T2. So these differences, they are averaged. And if the product fails, say for every 72 hours, then according to that, what we are going to do, the action taken is important. So this is how the charts are done. The next one is failure rate. It is provided as a function that gives the number of failures occurring per unit time. So per unit time, if you can show this in a graph, that is well and good. Next one is mean time to discover next K faults. So let us say 5 faults. For the next 5 faults, if you can find it within so many seconds, then that is mean time to discover the next K faults. Got it? So now, what is the outcome of this reliability testing? So finally, what should be your product? Reliability tested product. Okay. Your reliability tested product should possess the following features. What are these features? No errors or very few errors from repeated transactions. If I am going to make bank transactions 10,000 times, how many errors will occur there? There should not be any errors. The next one is zero downtime. Downtime means your software crashes. So zero downtime is the second requirement. Third one is optimum utilization of resources because you are going to keep a watch on resources when you are doing reliability testing. Consistent performance and response time of the product. So performance and response time should be kept in mind when you are doing reliability testing. No side effects after the repeated transactions are executed. So these are not checked in many of the testing phases of the software. So reliability testing is very, very important because these kinds of resource utilization are not checked anywhere in the software. So reliability testing is very important. Thank you.